Wisconsin, as if there weren't enough goddamn Scotties on this show tonight, Jesse. Well, you know, DJ, you gotta get used to it. You know, Wisconsin is a hotbed for wrestling talent, unlike the cities where you guys are oversaturated with nothing but flippy doo kids. Oh, wow, that's about as sick of a burn as the burn on the bratwurst that I had for breakfast. Well, thank you for supporting bratwurst for breakfast. Gunner Wicks, oh my god. Spelling his name, W-I-X-X, -X, I had it written down with the C-K-S spelling that would be considered almost conventional. And oh my god, we're in the pre-show match and we're already spelling shit all over the place. You know, I wonder if he got that approved by Ben and Ricky. That's supposed to be one of those crazy spots. You know, I wonder if anyone's gonna do anything, uh, perhaps flipping off the top rope. Maybe Mr. Wick here could certainly execute a moonsault or a 620 or 450 or some other such variation thereof. Well, he's really in love with the X. If you notice his pants, there's multiple X's on there as well. No, I mean, let's just ignore for a second. There's already a guy that uh, wrestles under the name X in the territory. However, here comes Jiggy Jack Spade. He comes in at, I would say, about a buck 80, buck 80 and a half. Yeah, it depends on the uh, the way you uh, convert the measurements. Very gracefully making his way down the ramp here at the Minsky Theater. Our opening pre-show bout, we have no idea if anyone will hear or witness this on any recorded device. However, we're still gonna go through the motions and bring you all of the verbal descriptions about what's taking place in the squared circle. That is if Mr. Spade makes it into the ring, and indeed he does. You know, one point in time, Jack Spade was one of the most decorated champions in the state of Wisconsin. He had not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six titles. Titles in what? Different weight classes. Huh. Yes. Yeah, but but in, in wrestling? Yes, in, what? in, huh, in okay. the sport of professional wrestling. So Gunnar Wicks definitely with the height advantage on Jack Spade here. Yeah, a couple, two, three inches. Challenge being issued to Jiggy Jack Spade. Some movement. Not a whole lot. Uh, Gunnar Wicks was asking Spade to knock him down. I think Gunnar Wicks kind of gets off on that. Here comes Wicks out with that forearm shot and certainly some more movement there. Close to the movement this morning. We don't need to get into that though as Gunnar Wicks putting the pressure on his opponent using that second rope strand. Gunnar Wicks definitely a evil doer at this point in time. Just Rocking the face of Jack Spade and the hellacious forearm. Evil indeed. Mm -hmm. Scotty's, you know. No other oh, way. Oh, God, jeez. Look at that knee right to the chest. And who's the real big man? Oh, yeah. The real big man, as if there's a facsimile of a big man amongst these two. Define big. Well, I guess it could be subjective, but. Gunnar Wicks nonetheless delivering the offense here from the Minsky Theater. Our pre-show match still testing out the lights to make sure that they are all the systems go. Well, this is a very beautiful theater. They do a lot of pole dancing here as well and burlesque. Pole dancing? Pole dancing, yes. I'll be damned. Yeah. There's a uh, pole dancing fitness studio like around the corner around this way and they are actually doing a rendition of the godfather with nothing but mario characters that is absolutely fascinating and i think that we need to dive deeper in that however right now jiggy jack spade trying to Ooh. get the offense going and i think the ring just broke in the opening match you know, that's why we kind of roll through things in a pre-show. In case something does break, we have time to fix it. Well, I don't know if there's going to be enough time in the world to get that repaired, considering the size of these two bohemians. Yeah, Gunner Wicks, really a lot of disdain for the rules of professional wrestling. Oh, Dan Fitzgerald almost just got an earful from Gunner Wicks. I did not know that was his name. 
And now, for goodness sakes, he's just choking him right in the clear view of the referee. Is Dan in relation to uh, F. Scott? I would imagine that that would not be the case when we consider the path that Dan Fitzgerald has taken in sports and entertainment, not indeed going the literary route. Yeah, well, you know, he's still got time. Yeah, he's got time to maybe write an autobiography in 15, 20 years, or perhaps maybe he can come out with his memoirs right now. Or, you know, marry a gal who uh, doesn't really like him too much and become an alcoholic. Huh, well, that wouldn't have anything to do with this business. Oh, no, not at all. Uh, Jack Spade definitely in a world of hurt here, but fighting back gallantly here on the one at Wicks. I mean, he's trying his damnedest, but he is just absolutely out of any type of cardiovascular conditioning. Nonetheless, coming off the ropes. One oh. more time. Caught him with the clothesline. Not much movement. 100% ineffective. Took off the pad. And a spear. I hope no one was going to be using one of those later on tonight because now you know what? They can't. Well, I can tell you this much. No one might be using the claw. Ooh, but instead going after the throat. Oh, my. Vicious choke slam, and that should be it. And I think the ring is destroyed for sure after that. We're going to have to move to a no ring wrestling event for the rest of the night. Time bomb makes it work. What? Live pro wrestling show. You gotta 